just said what you, you think. You've just given us your view, which is it has nothing to do with Islam. And other people will have a view that it is. But I'm suggesting that as a society, we actually take the time to work out people's motives. But it's very clear that in your case, for instance, you wouldn't want it to be ascribed to an Islamic motive. Even if it was turned out that he had a copy of the Quran in the car, you would, would say it had that. nothing to no, do no, with no, Islam. No, we would have and there are that. people, there are people. Let me finish. Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be checking out another debate where Douglas Murray is one of the speakers, and the title is Are We Right to Give Terrorists the Oxygen of Publicity? Wow, I believe this is going to be very interesting. Let's start with the video. Go. You are about to see Douglas Murray tell the truth as it is. Douglas Murray debates a panel of Muslim scholars on the influence of religion, particularly Islam, in the West today. Douglas Murray speaks what is on most people's mind today in the West, but what most are afraid to say. Douglas Murray did not hold back. Douglas, on the one hand, you're saying, look, we don't want to cower to the terrorists, we don't want to be singing their agenda, and yet the first thing everybody uses is the word Islam. Well, listen, in this particular state, I was actually in Scotland Yard on this case, so I was there on the day. To qualify as an Islamist incident, it has to fit a certain criteria. And it was discussed earlier on, but no one actually mentioned why this was classed and why it was taken over by SO15 as an Islamic incident. Otherwise, it would have just been homicide that would have taken over this case. There are certain criteria. For instance, if he said the word Allah Akbar, that would have been clearly uh, 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 an Islamic in, uh, Islamist incident. If he had had a flag of ISIS, clearly it would have been. Islamic. He didn't have any of those. He didn't say anything. He didn't leave a note. The only thing that makes this a counterterrorism. Uh, he was a Muslim. Was no, not even that. It was because he wasn't a... We don't know if he was a practicing Muslim because he clearly wasn't a very good Muslim. Was the what does that mean? What that does a very he, good Muslim mean? Well, if he's into... He was taking cocaine. He was into, um, you know, wife bashing, all those things. If he was a Muslim, he wouldn't be taking cocaine and having, you know, drinking alcohol. But or, it was because he beating. attacked... Let me just finish the point. The reason was because he attacked <laughs> a political institution, the heart of government. That was one of the reasons, if you like, um, that qualified it. We, he's in terms of practicing, that's still coming out. We don't know whether. Well, you've just said what you you think. You've just given us your view, which is it has nothing to do with Islam, and other people will have a view that it is. But I'm suggesting that as a society, we actually take the time to work out people's motives. But it's very clear that in your case, for instance, you wouldn't want it to be ascribed to an Islamic motive, even if it was turned out that he had a copy of the Quran in the car. You would, would say it had that. nothing to no, do no, with no, Islam. No, we would have and there are that. people. There are people. Let me finish the point. And there are people who would say it has something to do with Islam, even if it's. Very very clear that it has nothing to do with Islam. No, yeah. But there are, in this whole thing, my simple point is that we should be looking at the motives. And at the moment, there are parts of the, the anti terrorism and counter extremism strategy where the government is, and politicians are very worried about treading on it. And you saw it, as was mentioned earlier, in, in Theresa May's comments in the House this week, where she immediately ruled one aspect of this whole thing. Douglas Murray's stance on probing the religious motivations behind terrorist attacks, particularly those related to Islam is a critical and often overlooked perspective in the contemporary discourse on terrorism and security. Murray rightly criticizes the reluctance of media outlets and political figures to thoroughly examine the role that Islamic ideology may play in such atrocities. This avoidance, he argues, is primarily due to a fear of offending Muslim communities, which can hinder a full understanding and effective response to the threat. Firstly, it's important to note that the reluctance to discuss the religious motivations behind some terrorist attacks can lead to an incomplete narrative. For instance, research by the University of Maryland's Global Terrorism Database reveals that a significant proportion of global terrorist attacks have been perpetrated by groups or individuals with radical Islamist motives. This statistic is not to generalize or stigmatize all followers of Islam, but to acknowledge that like any ideology, parts of its interpretation can lead to radicalization. Moreover, Scholars like Sam Harris and Mayajid Nawaz have highlighted the necessity of distinguishing between the peaceful majority of Muslims and the radical fringes. In their book, Islam and the Future of Tolerance, they argue for a candid discussion about the aspects of Islamic doctrine that jihadists use to justify their actions. This discussion, they posit, is essential not only for countering terrorism, but also for empowering reformist elements within Muslim communities. A Pew Research Center study on religious beliefs and violence found varying perspectives among Muslim communities globally, with significant minorities in several countries justifying suicide bombings and other forms of violence against civilians in defense of Islam. 
Ignoring these viewpoints does not eliminate them. Rather, it potentially allows for their growth unchecked by critical discussion and debate. It is essential to advocate for open, honest dialogue about all aspects of terrorism, including religious motivations. This approach not only aids in the accurate assessment and strategy formation against threats, but also protects the wider Muslim community from unjust collective blame. Okay. So um, right. when, when you speak about journalism and accuracy, of course, and we all want the truth. It's not just you. I, I disagree it's me. that we all want the um, truth. I, I, okay, so <laughs> I uh, let me tell you for myself, and I can speak on behalf of perhaps 99% uh, of the British Muslim public, mm -hmm. that uh, uh, generally none of us know the motives behind people who carry out these acts. Um, I myself am very much part of this society. I'm born and raised a Londoner. I'm, I'm, I'm an observant Muslim. And you don't see somebody like me carrying out these acts no, inspired by my faith. Therefore, that doesn't mean therefore, that the people who do I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not, and people are analysing scripture. It's I not whether it's the Quran or the biblical scripture. You seem to be quite hung up on the fact that this is a Quranic scriptural well, point. But Sabah, but scri so, scriptures are open to her, interpretation, so, but, but, so and not literally, not literally can if they're not, back, if they're not quoting what, scripture, can I, can why I are we bringing scripture into this? If they're not quoting scripture, because a lot of them quote the scripture, because a lot of them quote the verses that say, "Find the interval infidels." This is a great example of it right here. Miss and Lucy thinks that none of the terrorists ever quote the Quran. Flat out wrong. Flat no, out wrong. Let me give you that. one example. You mentioned it earlier, the killers of Lee Rigby. Uh, Michael Adelajo, on his body, uh, when the police arrested him, uh, he had a note in his pocket to his young daughter explaining why he did what he did. It's all on the public record. You can see the facsimile on the BBC's website. And he has footnotes throughout it of Quranic verses that he explains justify, in his view, his actions. Now, I, well, that's the beginning. Well, 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 let me give you the scripture. Everyone's talking about the Before the proselytisation begins, OK? Let me just finish my point. That would seem to me to be, therefore, a very clear occasion, never mind the thousands of others we could list worldwide, a very clear occasion on this country when one of our soldiers was murdered on our streets where clearly scripture had something to do with it. So the problem that a lot of us have is we are willing to discuss the drugs bit, we're willing to discuss the foreign policy bit, we're willing to discuss all this. Why are you not willing to concede that there is a religious element? Sometimes. No, 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 no wait, wait, wait. We are not the main point. Mohammed, no, no, listen, here's my plan. Wait, wait a minute, everyone said, no, you're the first shot. Douglas Murray's assertion that there is a religious component in many terrorist attacks which stems from certain interpretations of the Quran, is an uncomfortable yet crucial point that demands honest examination. While the vast majority of Muslims worldwide live peacefully and do not subscribe to radical views, extremists often use specific Quranic texts to justify their violent actions. Understanding these interpretations is not about blaming a religion as a whole, but about recognizing the complexities within it that can be exploited by radicals. One commonly cited verse is Surah at Talbah, often referred to as the verse of the sword. Extremist groups interpret this verse as a command to kill non-believers until they convert to Islam or pay a tax in submission, unless they are part of a treaty. It's important to note, however, that many scholars and mainstream Muslims argue that this verse is historically contextual, intended only for a specific time and not as a general command. Another verse, Surah al-Baqarah, instructs Muslims to kill them wherever you overtake them, in reference to fighting against persecution. Radicals may interpret this as a broad license for violence, whereas traditional teachings emphasize its context of self-defense during persecution. These verses, among others, are prime examples of how religious texts can be interpreted in vastly different ways. Groups like ISIS and Al-Qaeda take these verses out of their historical and scholarly context to bolster their ideological narratives and recruit followers under the guise of religious duty. Wow, what what an interesting one! I repeat uh, the topic the topic again. Are we right to give terrorists the oxygen of publicity? And I think that other topic I have here, you are flat out wrong, Douglas Murray School British Muslim on terrorism. Wow, this video was actually gotten from Modern Wisdom YouTube channel. You can support this channel by clicking on the subscribe button uh, by going to his channel and 
you know, clicking on the subscribe button. Wow. So I think in this video, uh, Douglas Murray was trying to uh, make us understand that religious, religious contexts really play uh, a, a role in all, in all uh, in, really play a role a lot, really play a very, in this video, Douglas Murray was trying to uh, make us understand that uh, religious streets and contexts play a lot of role in the society. A lot of people might, you know, take out some word from the Quran and try to use it for their own uh, selfish, for their own selfish motive. And and you can tell that uh, the Islamists that was also uh, present in this debate. They were trying to address uh, the issue that it's not all it's not all Muslim that uh, that Mus Muslim is a peaceful religion. So uh, the fact that they are Muslim and they are not terrorists means that uh, it's not all Muslims that are that are terrorists. And I think Douglas Murray also accepted the fact that uh, also accepted the fact that. Uh, a lot of people has their own interpretation of the Quran. A lot of people have their own interpretation of the Quran. The way you might interpret it might be different from the way someone else might interpret it. And I think uh, in this video, they also try to uh, make us understand that at this, the verses of the, uh, the verses of the Quran that uh, they are trying to say, uh, the verses of Quran that the, the terrorists always use uh, that Douglas Murray has made us understand that these verses uh, uh, encourage violence. Uh, I think this, the Islamists made us understand that these verses were actually used for a particular time, for a particular period, to address some certain issue, to address some certain issue. And, you know, right now the world is uh, quite peaceful, quite peaceful as compared to during the time of, during the time of Muhammad. We a lot of war has to be fought, uh, has to be fought for freedom. We can all tell that right now, uh, the 21st century in which we are right now is quite peaceful. I know there are still a lot of a lot of conflicts going on between countries and countries, a lot of war. But the the uh, the world which we are right now, the 21st century in which we are right now, is quite peaceful as compared to during the time of Muhammad, where they have to resort to to war in order to fight for freedom. So if those verses were actually made for a particular time, for a particular period, and right now the world is, is, is a little bit peaceful as compared to uh, during the time of Muhammad, where they have to fight, where they have to fight for freedom. I believe those verses should be, should be reviewed, should be reviewed. I'm not saying they are bad verses, they are good verses, which was meant for a particular time, for a particular period, but the world which we are right now is quite peaceful. So if those verses were meant for that particular time, they shouldn't be, they shouldn't be used. They shouldn't be used in this 21st century to perpetrate, to perpetrate all sort of crimes. And just like what we are seeing in this video, Douglas Murray, what Douglas Murray was trying to address that do it's not par, it's not it's not like the religious is bad it's not like the religious is bad but a lot of people that are not even that are not even muslim that are not even muslim they try to use those those quranic verses to defend their actions and at the end of the day they try to use those verses to recruit people to recruit people into their group into their group trying to you know convince those people that they are fighting for a religious cause. So I believe what the Murray is trying to say in those verses is that he's trying to say in this in this debate is that these verses that are violent in nature in the Quran, they should be addressed, they should be reviewed. They should be reviewed. Because a lot of people we interpret those verses for their own selfish motives. So and I think and I think I kind of agree with uh, Douglas Murray point of view. It's not saying uh, it's not saying uh, Muslims are terrorists. It's not saying Muslims are violent people. What he's trying to say in this verse, what he's trying to say in this video, in this debate, is that 
uh, there are a lot of violent verses in the Quran that, uh, that, that there are a lot of violent verses in the Quran that even those that are not Muslim, those that are not Muslim, we try to use those verses to, we try to take uh, a verse from the Quran, just those take a verse from the Quran and try to use that verse to defend their cause. And at the end of the day, they recruit people and make those people believe that they are fighting for a religious cause and they try to quote the Quran to back what they are fighting for. So I believe, I believe this, this issue should be, should be addressed. This issue should be addressed. And I've really learned a lot from this video. I've learned a lot from this debate. I've learned a lot from Douglas Murray. And I also like to hear your opinion. Do you think those verses in the Quran that, uh, that are violent in nature, do you think uh, they should be reviewed because of uh, a lot of people have misinterpreted these verses for their own selfish motive? Wow. Keep the comments coming. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button. Click on the like button. Do have a nice day. Oh,